Hello everyone and welcome to Ed Research Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we continue our discussion on pancreatic cystic lesions and like we discussed last time we are focusing today on morphological basis and classification. So this is more of a discussion on how the cyst looks that is morphology and how you can identify the different types of cysts based on morphology and a classification that is already available based on morphology. So we have already seen the basics, the cell of origin. If you missed the last video, do have a look. And today we will discuss the classification part that will be over. And from upcoming parts of this series, we will look at the common cysts, the serocystic, mucinocystic neoplasms, the solid pseudopapillary epithelial neoplasm. And we will look at the guidelines as well as the practical algorithmic management. So when it comes to morphology of cyst or the terminology that is used in describing this cyst, be it exam, be it multiple choice questions, be it radiological reports, these are the terms that you will routinely see. And that is why we are discussing them upfront so that it becomes very easy when you are discussing different types of cysts. So when you see a single cyst, okay, cyst is a... Uh, thing that is filled with fluid. It can be epithelial or non-epithelial as you have seen in the previous video. So a cyst of this type is unilocular. If there is a nodule inside that unilocular cyst, it's a unilocular cyst with solid component or mural nodule. So the solid part inside a cyst is known as mural nodule. A cyst like this is a multilocular septated cyst. Okay, so the septas are dividing the cyst into loculi. So it is multilocular septated cyst. Whereas a cyst which has multilocular appearance but a lobulated outline. Okay, this is a multilocular lobulated appearance. So, okay, so there is a difference between multilocular septated and multilocular lobulated. Now both of them can have mural nodule. So multilocular septated with mural nodule or multilocular lobulated with mural nodule. So there is also a term known as macrocystic but that is not routinely used in the scientific literature that is available. If you want to use standard terms, the standard terms are unilocular, multilocular septated, then macrocystic which is multilocular lobulated and then you have something that is microcystic okay so this is the basic morphological appearance of the cyst or the pancreatic cystic neoplasm that you see okay just to summarize if it is a cystic lesion it can be unilocular with or without mural nodule it can be multilocular with or without a solid component or mural nodule as we have already seen, the multilocular can be septated, okay, septa are present, or lobulated, which is also sometimes known as macrocystic, and you can have multilocular pleomorphic. You can have microcystic, mural nodule is very rare in microcystic, but it can be present. Now, pancreas is also housed to solid tumors, so if there is a solid lesion, you can have a mixed solid cystic lesion, or you can have a solid lesion with cystic degeneration, okay? So whenever you have solid lesion and it, someone's talking about a cystic neoplasm, it can be a mixed solid cystic lesion or a solid lesion with cystic degeneration. So macrocystic word not routinely used in literature. It is basically multilocular lobulated and oligocystic can be unilocular, okay? So let us see some of the examples. Multilocular lobulated. These are oblong cysts. Remember grape. Okay. Grape is oblong. So branch duct IPMN has oblong multilocular lobulated appearance, which is bunch of grapes appearance, which is classical of branch duct IPMN. On the other hand, the cysts that are less than 1 to 2 centimeter are microcystic. Okay, more than 2 centimeter are macrocystic. Serocystic neoplasm is microcystic adenoma. Okay, that is the other name of serocystic neoplasm. And this appearance is classical for serocystic neoplasm, which is known as the honeycomb appearance. 
you can see here in the tail of the pancreas there is a classical honeycomb appearance a case of serous cystic neoplasm so like i said the morphology of the cyst decides a classification and that is what is there in your slide now solid tumors mixed cystic solid tumors then unilocular multilocular and micro cystic lesion so solid tumors we already know the neuroendocrine axis as well as the ductal adenocarcinoma mixed cystic solid is solid pseudopapillary neoplasm commonly seen pancreatic cystic neoplasm or you can have a cystic change in solid lesions unilocular are serous cyst adenoma mcn and ipmn as well as lymphoepithelial cyst Multilocular lobulated oligocystic serous cyst adenoma pleomorphic is IPMN and multilocular mucinous cystic neoplasm. Microcystic lesion is microcystic serous cyst adenoma, right? So, most common microcystic is serous cyst adenoma, most common multilocular is branch duct IPMN, most common unilocular is Lymphoepithelial cyst or mucinous cystic neoplasm, serous cyst adenoma, unilocular is less common. Okay. In mixed cystic solid, the common cystic tumor is pen or solid pseudo papillary tumor. And solid tumors, you all know, is ductal adenocarcinoma and metastasis. So, this is a classification that is purely based on morphology. That is how you will see these tumors on your scans. And that is the place where they are diagnosed most commonly because most of them don't have symptoms. They are going to be imaging findings, okay? Or a patient who has come with non-specific pain, you do a scan, you see these lesions. So you should know this morphology, okay? If you know this, your classification becomes very simple and you know what type of neoplasm you are dealing with. Now... Based on the names and based on the morphology, there is also something known as malignant potential Okay, for each of them. And if you will try to remember this table, it's going to be difficult. But if you remember these three M's, okay, in any of these cystic neoplasm, if there is mucin, if there is mural nodule, and if there is main pancreatic duct dilatation due to the cyst communication or compression, these are features that suggest malignancy, okay? So, based on this, you can now see that all the tumors that have mucin will be malignant or potentially malignant, such as mucinous cystic neoplasm, mucinous intraductal papillary neoplasm, MCN, okay, that is present. Cysts which don't have mucin, like serous cyst adenoma, is going to be benign. Lymphoepithelial cyst, no mucin, benign, right? Oligocystic serous cyst adenoma, benign. Solid tumors, like I said, if you have solid word in the tumor or the cystic neoplasm, it is predominantly malignant, right? Exception to this is cystic neoplasm, that is solid pseudopapillary tumor. So, though solid word is there, it is low-grade malignant, but you see metastasis in SPEN in 10% cases, okay? So, it is also having malignant potential. So, this is how you can easily remember three different classifications of pancreatic cystic lesions. If you understand the basis of the classification, it becomes very easy. So, we have now cleared the clopel classification, which is based on the cell of origin of cysts. We have seen the morphological classification that is based on the imaging characteristics of the cyst. And we have seen the malignant potential and a classification based on malignant potential also exists. Even WHO uses a classification of that sort. So, by this part, we have cleared the two important concept-based topics in pancreatic cystic lesions. Now, we will start to see some more concepts, okay, cyst fluid analysis, the common cysts. And once we have covered all that, we will look at how to incorporate all this information into managing a patient, that is the algorithmic management options. This is our website. So if you miss out on any videos or any topics, like we have topics, say liver anatomy is completely discussed, pancreatic 
imaging, radiology videos, all of that is there. The books are there. So you can have a look at our website, our faculties. Thank you.